What's up, y'all? It's Monday. It's me, Erica. We are down here. Um, we're talking about P Valley, and we're gonna talk about Real Housewives of Potomac. I don't know which one I'm gonna do first, depending on how I feel when we pull up. Um, P Valley was good, baby. Ooh, it was so good. Um, Housewives was just okay. It was, I guess, it was like a filler episode for the bombshell that's gonna come next week. Um, so we're just down here at the park. Um, people are off today, so I'm, I'm down here a little later than usual because I got up a little later than usual, but I still got up my regular time like a like a fool. Uh, <laughs> I can't help it. I cannot help it. I've been trying to sleep, and my eyes be like, <laughs> and it always be right before the alarm comes on. I'm like, girl, go to sleep go to sleep okay so i hope everybody had a great weekend um lovecraft county love calf love love calf county love calf girl you know what i'm trying to say it came off it came on on friday i think it came on on friday they posted an episode on friday and um episode four and it was really good it was really good a lot of symbolism um in there um, so much symbolism like like to me I feel like I noticed things in one two and three but I noticed so much clues and things and names that they were mentioning in four I was like oh I need to go back and watch one two and three again because I feel like I'm I feel like I'm missing something and I want to I want to whoop Montrose's ass I really do Michael K Williams I want to whoop your ass Cause you getting on my nerves. He, he he's getting on my nerves. So I guess we could talk about um, Real Housewives of Patanka. I'm watching this man. I be wondering what they picking up off the floor. I don't know what they be picking up. Do y'all know what drug addicts be picking up off the floor? I'm gonna assume this man is a drug addict. Cause I don't wanna assume that you would be picking stuff off the floor just to. Why are you picking stuff off the ground, like in the parking stalls? Girl, let me let me mind my own business. Let me mind my own business. Okay, so they start off where they left off. I guess I can I can turn my car off. They t they start off where they left off, right? Um overall the episode was just okay. I I it was just okay. So we're gonna get through it. Um, so they start off where they left off, Ashley and, Ashley and, um, Wendy fighting back and forth. I don't know if anyone else noticed, but did y'all hear when Ashley kept trying to get in? She kept saying, gone with the wind, Wendy, gone with the wind, Wendy. It was so weird. I was like, why does she keep saying that? It's not, it's just as stupid as that woman calling you a brokey, like, Gone with the wind, Wendy. Gone with the wind, Wendy. I was like, why is she saying that? I got secondhand embarrassment. I was just like, why does she keep doing that? Anyway, so she was like, let, you know, she called her brokey. She was like, I got four degrees. I'm not stupid. I got four degrees. Um, And then Mo and her confessional, which we heard last week, and she, they let it play again. We already have a Candace, someone who's loud for no reason or something like that. That's crazy. And if y'all noticed that Monique has been on a press tour, so I don't know what's going on, but the but the the clip from next week, Robin says the cracks in um in Monique's persona are showing. And it's funny that Monique called herself perfect Patty. It is a trip how you yes, these editors can make you look a certain way. But they're using what they have. And it's so funny how Robin saying this, Monique calls herself Perfect Patty in this episode. And then the pancake challenge was like, that was so perfect. And, it, and then I was so glad that Candace made that statement in her interview. It was so perfect. We'll get to it. Um... Her husband's rich and she was like, well, that's when she said broke broke or whatever So then Karen sits her Her wig half off at the table and says 
you know, it's been five years and I don't think that I've ever called any of these women bitches. That's real low. Roll, the, roll the tape. Roll it. You a dizzy bitch, she called Robin. Robin said, bitch. Robin's hair was cute when she leaned over. She was like, bitch. I was like, okay. <laughs> Anyways, um, two years ago, Karen. See, that's the that is the reason first season that I didn't like Karen because Karen was acting as if she was somebody that she wasn't and Wendy has caught on to that and I think that might be in in addition to you throwing around your you know you throwing around your credentials but at the same time Karen is not authentic it's a lot of inauthenticity in this group and even my kid noticed it when they were having pizza. I'll get to that. Um, Monique makes a comment in her interview that Wendy didn't have to come. If it was going to be so much, you didn't have to come. No, lady. You should have told that woman that it was going to be a kid-friendly girls trip. And they they still took it to the next day day two took it to the next day oh and then ashley says in her interview i mean if this as experienced mothers they should have compassion i said that too but i said that in as it related to wendy y'all should have compassion y'all understand everybody gets it you understand what it takes to pump and all that other stuff i said the same thing ashley but i wasn't saying it to your damn scamming ass i was talking about wendy and wendy explained herself again to giselle she explained herself again to ashley what the problem was you you did all this work only to come back and come to this house and this woman has her baby and you're looking like bitch somebody could have brought i could have brought my own baby we've all we just we said that last week um we said that you guys said that Wendy's anger was misdirected towards Ashley, but we see Ashley later apologize for her part because she knew what she was doing. Um, if they don't, if, if they could see that I make the decision for the health of me and my son, girl, shut up, shut up, shut up. Um, Candace and Wendy, they get in, in the room with their bonnets on and she was like, girl, I ha held my ground and she was like, yeah, and she was like, but I feel like they were disregarding my feelings. She, and then, um, J Candace was like, girl, but when you called her a fake ass bitch, that was probably a little bit too much, um, because you just met the girl. So you really don't know, but honey, I could, you could meet somebody and know off the bat, like we see each other. Okay, um, but she said that was way too much. She was like, I don't know. I felt I just, <laughs> Wendy said, I don't know. I just felt it in my spirit. I get it, Wendy. <laughs> bitch, you a fake ass bitch. I'm calling you everything. I don't I don't know you. So I really don't have you don't really have good reads. So because you don't know the person. So all you could do is just call them broke. That's all you could do. And it just didn't land, Wendy. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see how everything else goes. Day two. Um, in the morning, they show Giselle and Robin jumping on Monique's beds. I don't know why I didn't find that funny. I was like, girl, you guys are the worst. Um, they had, they, you know, it was funny because they had bathrobes. They had bathrobes. Let me get my tweets up. They had bathrobes, but no activities. I don't think that, I don't think, do y'all think that, what kind of, do y'all think that what's her name is a good hostess? Do y'all think Wendy, um, um, Monique is a good hostess? What do y'all think? Hold on, let me get through this. I'm trying to find my tweets. Because, you know, I have notes. <laughs> I, I have notes. Uh, two. I have notes and notes. Um, so then they show Ashley in the bedroom with her baby, wrapping her baby up or talking to her baby and stuff like that. Um, Ashley calls Michael and there's no answer. Um, she said this is her first time away from Michael, but it's not a big deal because she's not used to used to seeing him anyway all right all right all right all right even even on the first episode when they went and took that walk and Ashley had that yellow dress on that even looked out of place that didn't even look authentic at all that looked like that didn't look right at all um so they get into the they start making pancakes so this is in the morning Monique got all of them like robes and everything um Monique you know in her 
you know, um, planning of this girl's trip for her birthday. Um, and it really was, it's not really a girl's trip because the husband's come the next day, but that's next episode. Um, so they make the pancakes, um, Monique is bra bragging about her pancakes and how good they are and how you slice it down the middle so the butter can go down the middle and she has the crispy edges and all this other stuff. And then Giselle was like, girl, I, I don't have to, honey, it ain't got to be pretty as long as it tastes good. So they make their pancakes. Wendy is the announcer. She comes back. Ashley whispers under her breath, why you give Wendy the mic? See, that's what gets you in trouble every single time, Ashley. Them little snide, little comments under the breath. And then when somebody calls you out on it, then it's like, oh my God, I'm a you know, mother, a new mother, please help me, Lord God. You know what I'm saying? And it, we're not we're not here for all of that. Um, the Monique ends up winning the challenge, but the the I believe that taste should win. When um, Monique got more points on presentation than she did on taste, I think taste is ultimately what matters. Um, in a pancake, I'm like Giselle. Giselle's pancakes look good. I'm sorry. <laughs> Like, them motherfucking pancakes look good as fuck. I don't know what the fuck they talking about. Them pancakes look good. They was they was different shapes and shit, but they weren't perfectly round like Monique's. But just like Candace said, baby's moles was pretty on the out, aesthetically pleasing on the outside, nothing on the inside. And Giselle's was messy on the outside and ultimately good on the inside. Um, perfect metaphor for their personalities i truly believe i don't know about good on the inside for giselle we gonna give her the benefit of the doubt because candace knows her better than we do <laughs> so but um it was a perfect metaphor because we've been saying it since monique samuel has, has come on our screen some of us have clocked monique from the beginning um i used to clock it when she would say when she would act like the other women were so messy and she wasn't and even she would play play that up to her husband like every time you get around those women you get messy she played that up like she was perfect you know what i'm saying so we see what we see the storyline that's that's going on and we see Monique is doing press tours she didn't call Bondi she been on DJ Richie Sky um who else has she been calling she's been doing lives and I think I feel like she's really trying she's she's on a let's clean this image up because they getting ready to play this this um this this footage of me and Candace fighting and I hope I hope Monique has a good reason for this fight Cause it seems like she's trying. I, I don't know what's going on. No, no details about this fight, but it seems like it might have been for no reason. And she's trying to. This is this is just how I feel. Um, and she's trying to clean her shit up before before it comes through. Anyways, um, I said Tay should win. Anyways, so Monique and Chris are on the phone. And Chris is like, um, but baby, Robin loves Giselle. She really does. She was like, Giselle's pancakes are good. That's da 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 da. And then Karen was like, Giselle's pancakes taste like doo doo. Did you did all hear that? I don't like Karen's interviews because she'd be lying in her interview. She lied on Wendy. Um, but I'm going to get to that. Aesthetically pleasing with nothing on the inside. Um, so Chris is on the phone with Monique. And he was like, okay, since we coming down there, we gonna come down there and I'm figuring I wanna be in the pool too. I wanna be in the pool. So I figure we just gonna cater so I don't have to be up. Listen, I'm with Chris. I'm with Chris as 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 much of a barbarian caveman, drag a woman by the hair, you my wife type of energy he gives. Um I'm with him. I have worked hard. I have money and the means. I I don't want to come to my house on the river and be standing over no hot ass grill. I want to have my black ass in the pool with the rest of y'all. I don't want to be grilling and missing because part of that is you missing out. That's like cooking in the kitchen. Everybody's outside and same thing on the grill. You looking at everybody having fun and you sitting on the grill. 
let's order a caterer let's have um let's get let's order a caterer let's have a caterer and bring some food out here i was thinking we get a caterer so monique says she doesn't want to argue it's her birthday weekend I don't see where where you would put bring the argument. She wants him to make the stuff. He doesn't want to make it. Would we be rooting for if she if it was other the way around and he wanted her to make something and she was like, let's just get a caterer? Monique, you're the only one in this group who likes to run themselves tired so you don't appear to be lazy. Don't nobody else want to do that. We ha you have money and means and resources and access get a caterer girl so your husband can enjoy the fruits of his labor he got hit a lot of times i'm sure so let him enjoy the fruits of his labor let him let his let him dip his ashy feet in the pool too he wants to dip his feet in the pool I don't blame Chris. You know, I you know how I feel. I think Chris is the who he is as a, you know the man of the house. I I'm I'm with him. So she said she's gonna put that in the box right next to Candace, and one of these days the box is gonna drop and it's gonna be a big mess. So Wendy and Giselle go for a walk, and she's like, you know, I really want to get to know you, but um, last night I was I don't know if I really want to get to know you. I don't know why it is like Giselle is like everybody wants to be Giselle's friend. I don't think Wendy particularly cares, but um, I don't know. She was like, we from the same sorority, so, you know, this and that. And she was like, girl, but I didn't, you know, I don't know if I really want to get to know you after what happened last night. And she was like, okay, that's fair. She was like, let's just leave the mothering alone. She explained to her, you know, to, to do all of that and to come over here and see another baby. I was thrown off. I was thrown off. Um, she was like, well, your anger should have been directed towards Karen of all people. Giselle, that doesn't even make sense that you threw Karen in there. I guess I guess she senses the issue, right? She heard Karen say that, you know, she going to come with her credentials and her three kids and all this other stuff. I don't know what Karen, girl, I don't know. But then she said that she called, she was like, girl, I'm a teacher and I have four degrees. Here we go again. I got four degrees and I, the, my PhD, I'm the first black woman in my field to get a PhD and what I got my PhD in, girl. So what the fuck is she talking about? And you may just have to flex on her. She just, I mean, Karen is from, you know, I don't want to say Karen is from a farm. She went from a farm. Ray pulled her off the farm and young tender got this young tender up in here. Um, and she really didn't have to do anything. She didn't have to do all the women are kept all of them except for Wendy and probably and Giselle, but Giselle, I don't know. Giselle went to school. What did Giselle go to school for journalism or something like that? That was Mariah, huh? What did Giselle go to school for? She didn't have to do anything. I was like, I hope them pancakes are good. Because I was like, this this pretty, this pretty girl, she ain't never had to do nothing in her life. I hope at least the bitch can cook some pancakes. <laughs> so she made her pancakes. I'm sorry, the pancakes look good. Y'all you know, know how I feel about Giselle, but them pancakes look good. I don't care. They looked good, good. She called, she said that Karen called Wendy a floozy freelancer. Girl, when did she say that? We didn't even hear her say that. And I'm sure Bravo could have picked that up. But she can Google me. That's what Wendy said. I heard that. I heard that. Giselle is so tired and through. I don't know why they kept showing um, Karen's shoes. Anybody else notice that? So they went up to the lake. Giselle was complaining. Um, they're going to go fishing on these little paddle boats. And everybody's acting funny. Everybody's acting like they've never been outside before. Everybody's acting like... Giselle acts like she don't live in the middle of Sherwood Forest. Girl, you have a lot of nerve i don't like i don't know i don't know i might used to go fishing with my grandfather i know how to bait a hook uh, and everything cast everything i know how to do all of that so to me when i'm looking at people who act like oh my god i can't do this i can't do that it's so gross to me i just don't like for, i know that some people are not outdoorsy people and some people are afraid of worms and shit but i guess when you learn at a very young age and you go fishing with your grandpa and your grandparents they teach you all that stuff so you learn not to be afraid of stuff like that so and you look at people who are afraid of stuff like that you look at them crazy like girl 
Oh, he did he leave that homeless man? Them seagulls are going to get his stuff. He took a bunch of stuff out of the trash can and put it to the side. But baby, it's a seagull. And the seagull just flew and parked his ass right there. And he's looking around like, okay, so whose stuff is this? Because if ain't nobody eating it, I'm about to take this motherfucker and I'm about to call my friends over here. Here come another one. <laughs> He go get his stuff. He took a bunch of stuff. He took like some, um, I don't know. It's like a, a, you know, a styrofoam, you know, one of those white styrofoam takeout um, things. Here comes another one. Yep. He took it and a bunch of um, pizza crust. I don't know if that was his, but that, that seagull's tearing that shit up. Anyway, so Wendy and Ashley, they sitting on the boat. Um... Monique is on the boat. She's paddling out. I guess she was by herself. And then Robin and um, um, Candace were. Candace is always a good sport, which I, I can appreciate. So she gets on the. She she prompts Wendy and, and Ashley are sitting there. She's like, no, Ashley, you know, we talked about you, uh, Giselle and I. You came up and blah, blah, blah. And she was like, oh, really? I came up? She was like, yeah, girl. But in a good way, you know, I just wanted to say, you know, basically I own my part for what happened last night. Um, and she explains herself again. And then Ashley goes, do I hear an apology? That's Wendy was like, you hear me owning my part. You hear me owning it. Right. So then she tries to get her to apologize again. And then I don't understand this, but then Ashley goes, you know what? I'm sorry. I sh I kept it going. I should not have kept it going. Da da da. She was like, okay. She was like, okay. So I I I apologize too. Karen and Giselle having a little side conversation, and Giselle goes, oh no, let's like kind of stay back. So I think that Giselle thought that Wendy might have confronted Karen right then and there because Giselle set that up so sweet that I th I. Th feel like that I feel like she did either she didn't want to leave because she thought Wendy was going to bring it up or she just was being nosy and wanted to hear the rest of their conversation but she kept like saying she was like no no just just listen like you know and then Karen was like um I think I think they're gonna work it out some she said some she said but Giselle really she wanted to say um then in Karen's interview she goes all of you you went from one night saying bitch i'm a, a you a bitch and all this other stuff into the next night talking about please forgive me crying if please forgive me karen that's lying i don't like when people are dishonest like that because you know that lady was not crying saying please forgive me to ashley she was crying thinking about how she left her premature baby at, at the house who's not only premature but two weeks younger than a quarter of a year old dino <laughs> okay shit um okay thank you for raising up um so they go out to outside to the pool oh ashley says she has postpartum and she's lost herself and then wendy said i lost myself too but it seemed to be like a disconnection there like that she wasn't really trying wendy wasn't really trying to hear um, she doesn't have sympathy for you, remember? So you playing it, oh, I'm postpartum and I've lost myself. She doesn't care. She doesn't have sympathy for you, remember? You forgot? Um, <laughs> so Giselle's, Giselle's trying to call Jamal and the kids. Ashley and Michael, they on the phone. That was really, really awkward. Um, they asked her, does Michael like to be second to the baby? And she was like, no, he doesn't. And it was weird how Ashley was like, I'm going to tell your daddy. And the baby was crying. The baby seems to be very, um, the moments that they catch the baby, like, I, Ashley, prop the phone up so that you can talk to Michael and hold the baby at the same time. Prop the phone up, girl. You understand what I'm saying? Um... Karen calls Ray and she was like, I didn't sleep well without you. Um, and he was like, oh, okay, that's so nice. <laughs> ah, bitch. He was like, all right, thanks for the call. <laughs> I was like, oh, baby, I don't know what, I don't know if Ray got him another young tender or what's going on. But Ray is not interested in Karen and what she got, what she got going on at all. He was like, thanks for the call. He hit her with a thanks for the call. I said, what did he say to her? I had to go back and watch it. Ray was not here for it. Um, so wait a minute, where are we? Okay, we're not out. We're not out at the we're not out at the, at the pool yet. 
Um, okay, by the pool. Here we go. By the pool. So Ashley and Dean look like they're just having a hard time. First, Dean didn't have on a hat. She she was covering his face like that. I bet you that baby didn't have on any sunscreen. That baby is not black. I mean, black people, wear your sunscreen. But, uh, what's the name? Ashley, you need to put sunscreen on that baby. I didn't see, I'm sorry, I didn't see her put on no sunscreen. She may have put on sunscreen. But, that baby is Michael Darby's child. That baby needs a slather of as much mayonnaise as you put on Michael's sandwiches. Put that much sunscreen on Dino. Okay? <laughs> so, <clears throat> so, they're sitting by the pool. He crying. He, like I said, he probably don't have on any sunscreen. So Candace makes a comment that... So Candace is making all these comments about Ashley and motherhood. Now, at first, you, like, you thought it was she looked very comfortable. She's coming into motherhood, how much she wanted to be a mother. You're looking at, at that as inspiration. Now you're looking at her saying, oh, she's having a hard time. She seems to be struggling. What is it, Candace? Candace, what are you trying... Candace is really trying to get a house so she's trying to say she wants a baby so she can have a bigger house when the house that you live in bitch you're not having octuplets you're having you might have one you possibly might have two babies possibly it's pro it's, it, it'll be a snowball's chance in hell if you have three babies at one time your first go round okay so you saying that you need a bigger house this is a scheme that Todd set up we hadn't already peeped you Candace we didn't already see what's going on because now you're looking at, at Ashley saying she's struggling stop looking at Ashley as a barometer of how to navigate mommyhood okay don't do don't do it so Karen says to Monique I'm hungry we gonna eat your bird girl come on we we looking at your bird we looking at T'Challa where's the food so they order pizza and they look like they go off into this side house next to the pool or something. Um, it didn't look like the, the, the normal house. So, people out here exercising. Um, so, they're eating pizza. My son said, <laughs> let me tell you something. He's 11 years old. He said, they're not friends. That's why I don't have anything to talk about. That's what he said. He's 11. He said, they're not friends. That's why they don't have anything to talk about. He was like, how are they sitting there not talking? They showed Ashley, not Ashley. Was it Robin? Robin or Candace? Somebody was yawning. They're so bored. And I said, oh, Monique, you're a great hostess. You have everything. Pre the presentation is good. You have the robes and all that stuff. But you don't have any activities planned. I mean, I think fishing was, the, was cute. I thought fishing was cute. But then, of course... Giselle comes up with some sort of another competition thing. So they're going to play um, a pageant game with... Oh, did y'all see Ashley drinking a Corona? Did y'all see that? Anybody else? Okay. Let me know if you saw Ashley getting her drink on. Okay? Uh, they just sitting around looking at each other. They play this little pageant game of Ashley and Candace because you know they've been in pageants before that's really how they know each other um and that's that's why they are always catty with each other it's, it's a constant competition um they do their things Ashley twerks um uh, Candace sings happy birthday yet again um and Candace ends up winning. Um, what while she was twerking, Karen said, "Oh, you could twerk with a with a torn butthole." Um, so when when they get to the question round, of course, Giselle asks questions that focuses on their insecurities. What I mean, what else would she ask her? Would she ask them? They both gave great answers. I was like, come on, Candace. They both gave great answers. Wendy was pumped up, even with Ashley's answer. She was like, yes, um, smart. And what'd she say? Yes, smart and beautiful. Some she said. So, um, Karen in her interview says, she called, I don't know what y'all put in the comments, but I don't know what she called because Giselle got some big legs, right? Giselle's legs are big. We know they're big. She got some big thick legs men like that i don't know i mean women might not think it looks aesthetically pleasing but the niggas love big legs 
They do. So that's that, you know, she got a pretty face, thick, big legs, and them skirts and stuff. The niggas like that stuff. Here are the dogs. Look at the dogs, little Pomeranians. All right. So what happened after that? Okay, so Candace, okay, so they win the competition and then T'Challa says, You trick. That was funny. Um, so Candace gets a text message. And a text message is from one of Candace's friends. The way she she outlined it made it seem like this was a reliable source. And that she was going to um, tell Michael, she was going to tell Michael um, that Michael has been at the strip club or was with some strippers and was trying to go back to the hotel and share that he had a boyfriend and a wife. Um, so what's her name runs and tells Candace runs and tells Giselle because she knows Giselle's going to tell it. She's going to figure out a way to blurt it out or tell it. She's the perfect person to actually to carry it is Giselle. So she runs to Giselle. She tells Giselle. Giselle in her true Virgo fashion says read it verbatim. That's me. I need it from end to end. Tell me what it says. Don't, don't read in no riddles or anything like that. Tell me from end to end what this damn thing says. So Giselle in her interview goes, I pray to God it's not real. Girl, you're praying to God that it is real. You know that you want it to be real. She was like, we have to tell her. <laughs> she was like, we have to tell her. So they go to get, eat some crab, go to Billy's Crab Shack. They dress like they go into the club. They're asking each other, how's each other doing? How's Chris and this and that? She was like, oh, we're going to go to, a, we have our podcast. Um, we're going to have a live podcast and we want you guys, um, you guys are invited to the live po podcast. Um, and then she talked about, she wants him to do stuff, more stuff around and Robin makes a comment saying as long as the money's good you know when athletes are used to having things cater to them so it's not they 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 don't they want everything catered to them and I don't understand I, I mean like I really think it was bad branding for um for um, Monique to call her thing not for lazy moms only because it's just like now if you hire help you're gonna look lazy you set your you really shot yourself in the foot trying to I don't know I mean I mean it is in for motherhood for for women I think the harder you work the more worn out you are the 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 medal of honors that you get like a goddamn girl scout the more shit you get more medals you get for running yourself ragged at least some women do believe that Monique is one of those women she would not have named her thing that if she think you're not lazy that means you're doing everything yourself you're a rich woman why the fuck are why the fuck are you doing everything yourself? There are single mothers out here with not with not as, as much money as you, not nearly as much money as you, and would want help. And you want to do it all yourself, running yourself ragged. It's not cute. So Robin says, honey, until that money until the money changes, Chris is gonna be the same. So you just gonna have to you just gonna have to get you a trainer, Monique. Um, so they sitting there eating crab and Ashley, um, Sheila then told Ashley the crab shit was mustard. It's natural mustard. Bitch, does it taste like mustard, bitch? Does it fucking taste like mustard, bitch? I said, why the fuck would she sit there and say that? Why would she sit there and say that? She was looking crazy. They was looking, even Giselle was like, it tastes good to me. Giselle eat the whole thing. Um, what's her name? Karen. Giselle asked Karen about Ray. And she was like, you know, saying her little spiel about Ray. And that's when Wendy said that Karen is phony. She's phony. She's just phony. And she's not honest with her relationship. She's not honest with me. She's not honest with herself. She's not honest. She's just, she's just phony. Um, then Mo at Monique asked Ashley, how is Michael? Um, he's ready for us to come home. Ashley lies. He was at the MGM with his friends. Um, and, and then Candace said, girl, we got to tell, we got to tell you that your husband is in these streets, bitch. When she said that, bitch, when Candace, Candace going to get in trouble, but they throwing shade in the interviews because Candace called Monique, um, what she call her? A jungle. A jungle something, a jungle hole. She called her something. I don't know where where I wrote it down. 
I was like, oh, y'all throwing y'all throwing your little sh your little jabs at each other in your interview. I can't find where she called her a jungle something, a jungle hoe. You trick. That's what T'Challa said. Anyways, y'all, that's that that's what happened on the episode. A Jane the Jungle hoe. That's what she called her. I was like, girl, okay. That was it, y'all. Y'all tell me what y'all think of the episode. It was whatever. It wasn't like, ooh, next week we're going to see. We saw Michael deny. He denies everything. Nothing. Michael does nothing. He absolutely does nothing. He's an angel. So, And Ashley's sitting there like, is that true? Bitch, you saw her send a picture of him. Who, who did you think it was? Girl, we don't even know how that's going to turn out. But I don't. I thought it was weird that Candace walked right out of the house, right to Giselle's in, in, in um, Giselle's house, and walked right past Ashley, and then tell Ashley. I really wish she would have been like, "Girl, here, read this. I just got this." That would have been better in the kitchen. But you want everybody to be around. That's the that's the thing. Y'all want everybody to be around to get everybody's reactions. And I, I guess the producer tells the producers tell them that. Just wait for everybody to be around and then pop it on them. I wouldn't have did that. I would have went right to Ashley and been like, somebody just sent me this. Read it. Read it yourself. And that's it. And that's just it. All right, y'all. Y'all take care of each other. Protect your energy. Let's get down in the comments. We coming back with P-Valley. Peace.